Welcome to the 61st edition of Make Pro Wrestling Majestic Again. I am Tiger Height. And I am Peanut Gallery. And we are going to be covering AEW's and NJPW's Forbidden Door. But first, let's do some heckling from the hard camera. Peanut Gallery, what are we talking about? Well, based on what I saw tonight, a lot of injuries were happening. So um, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the injury curse of 2022. And... Um, I'm going to go over some of the reasons as to why I believe a lot of these wrestlers are getting injured and what, if anything, can be done to have prevented some of these injuries. Okay. So, as everyone is very well aware of, based on tonight's event and based on what's happening at Money in the Bank, there are a ton of people who are, a ton of top stars even, who are out with various sorts of injuries. Right. Now, those injuries can range from the mundane injury where they'll just be out for a little while to the major injuries that were they're taken out for months and months and months. There are some injuries that are are uh, towards people who may not be in the main event picture, and then there are the bona fide main eventers. There are people in the the face their face the baby faces their heels. Every it seems like everyone is just getting injured. I don't know if you've seen it, but it just seems like everybody is getting injured. Right. You know this this happens every now and then as it relates to wrestling industries. Yeah. But it's been a couple of years since this has happened. Like at this scale. Yes. Like like it seems like you know with the amount of car changes for Forbidden Door, mm -hmm. and then I think we had two different now. Uh, the FTR one might not be – that one might be storyline based. But then there were also a lot of people with the tape on their shoulders, right. on the, their backs. Um, like, the, the, the athletic tape. It, it that, seems like people are either – they're working through injuries or they're undiagnosed injuries. Or they're like being strapped on with like an egg until they can kind right. of get through the pay-per-view cycle, which at least, right. at least AEW has enough time in between for them to actually rest. So Right, but – the, the point being is that there just seems to be a lot of people who are in sometimes very important positions who just become injured. Right. We're going to go over some of the major injuries. Obviously, uh, we all know about our Cody Rhodes. We all know about our Rhea Ripley's. We all know about CM Punk. We all know about Matt Cardona. We all know about, um, you know, it seems like Adam Cole might be injured as well. Um, oh, just, he's definitely hurt. Just in general, just the amount of huge injuries that, that have occurred. But, um, you know, maybe some lesser known ones uh, would be people, uh, you know, obviously we know that uh, Edge has also hurt a little bit as well. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish are both hurt. Um, what about this one? Uh, that's Ray Ripley. This was oh, she, that's, that's right. She, she, she kicked herself in the teeth. Right. Caused a brain injury. Um you know, I'm, Big, I'm, Big I'm e, covering up the injury. Hang on, right. let me move. Yeah, Big E is another one who is injured. Um, it, it just seems like a lot of these, and, and it really limits rosters in their potentials to create matches. Right. And there are a couple of reasons as to why I believe, and, and really these pictures are just meant to be kind of a, a placeholder for what right. I mean, I'm not really kind of going through each wrestler and what they're injured with and stuff like that, but I want to go over a couple of reasons as to why I believe these superstars are injured. Right. Um, I think that the first and most important reason that we should address is the, the return of the demand for travel. Yep. And I am not just talking about domestic travel within the United States because we didn't really see that big of an uptick in injuries, injuries once we returned to domestic travel. It was international. It was the international stuff. Yep. That is when people started getting hurt. And also when these promotions started to do more cross-promotional stuff as we have seen with people like Matt Cardona, for example. I think that the schedules being so packed in, the schedules being so people uh, people uh, want tight. people want everybody yeah. because everything was shut down because of the pandemic. Right. There's, so they're uh, trying there's to demand for these superstars to appear at certain shows. And these, and these superstars need to make that money, and also they want to make sure that they keep that 
they need to keep their allure. But at the end of the day, what is the risk right. for these? Like with Matt Cardona, he's wrestling in you know four or five different promotions. He's holding multiple champions, and, see, and now think, he's hurt with a huge yeah, bicep and injury. And see, I think that's a good example as to what happens when the demand all of a sudden comes back for certain superstars, and they they want to perform multiple nights a week at certain shows in certain cities. I think that that sort of travel schedule, that sort of tightness, really put a hamper on this potential of these superstars to keep themselves healthy. Right. Even when things opened back up, they were only doing one, maybe two shows a week, and they were doing it in in the same sorts of, you know, in the same cities and stuff, you know, like within that week. So they were only traveling maybe once a week. Now it seems like they're traveling four or five, six times a week. Right. And, you know, um, as soon as we don't have a um, a pay-per-view to cover and doing heckling and stuff, one of the big proprietors, and actually I think would eliminate a lot of these injuries, um, is seasonal wrestling. Right. And I think that um, we've discussed it briefly in the I past. Think, I, I think, think we, need do, we need to do a long-form show need, about something do, like that. We need to revisit. Because actually, I'm, I'm actually a big proprietor now. With yeah, Rick, well, now I actually, this I, this injury is kind of right. different, and and I actually think you know, and and going off of that, I do think, and we're going to talk more about other in, other reasons why people are getting injured as well, but I think one of the I think we discussed that when we had the pro wrestling zone about doing a sort of uh, seasonal system, but I think it's worth revisiting yep. now that the current climate's the way that it is. Another reason why I think that people, a lot of people are getting injured is because they have the expectation that they want to perform at a higher level. Right. And I think that, again, this is one of those symptoms. I don't, I don't, think, it's, I don't think it's performers. I think it's the fans. I think, I think it goes both ways, though. I think the fans expect more, and I think that the performers want to give more. Right. Now, let's, let's put this into perspective. During the pandemic era— when there were no fans in the crowds, the the WWE was able to cater and 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 promote superstars in a certain way, in order to make them look the best, just you right. know just with camera angles and stuff like that. And there was no one there to really, uh, to really kind of um, say yes or no to it, right? Now with the fans there, I think there's a lot more scrutiny. There's a lot more expectation. I don't think that the superstars are able to provide at the level that they are. Being able to, provide. I agree. I agree with you on that, actually. Yeah, um, and I think another another thing too, and I think this goes back to the travel thing, is that the access that they have to facilities, to doctors. I I think um, I think it still might be somewhat limited. I, I well, again, I think that on the road it's always going to be a limitation, but at least if you're not traveling, you're able to take the time in order to make yourself be the healthiest, fittest, best sort of person that you can be. But this, I mean, now, there there was always, like, a certain criterion where injuries happen. Yes. Like, it does happen, actually, at least once a year within the wrestling industry. We're just kind of in the middle of that right now. Yeah. But the, this but, doesn't happen once every single year. This happens once every, I mean, the, the injuries to this scale, I don't think I've seen injuries to this scale since uh, maybe – early to mid-2020 when the pandemic first struck, when they had to make so many changes to these cards. Like, this is probably a cycle that happens every two to three years. When, now, maybe when not maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe not to this level, but there's always a time when, at least within WWE, there are at least three to four very high-profile, very serious injuries. It always happens. Well, I know that that happens in his. In no, his no, no, no. Also, with I'm, I'm talk- keep in mind that we, a- that right right before we really started to get into the online community and being really truly exposed to a ton of other promotions, that we did not see those injuries. And now, since we're starting to get more season to them. With especially with coming back from the pandemic, we're starting to see more of those injuries. So it seems like it's a lot bigger, but in reality, I don't think it is. I think it is. This is a cycle that happens every two to three years in every major promotion. Um, AEW is having their first issues right now. Like they have never had an injury list so large up until today and and so high profile you you know like you said you had cm punk with the broken foot you You have pretty much every single member of of uh of the undisputed elite 
You have literally no. I think every single one yeah. is injured in some way, shape, or form. You Bobby Fish is out. You have people with multiple tag teams that are out, and Impact and not Impact. Uh, AEW is going through its first. Actually, cycle. I, th- I think Impact is being spared right now. Yeah, as it Impact to the is injuries. Impact is doing better, but I know that there was a point in time when Impact. I think it was in 2021 when mm-hmm. they had this slate of injuries. Yep. Um, but again, I think every single promotion kind of goes through the cycle of just having these injuries. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that they're on the road. Right. Um, and that they don't have access to the facilities. That they're, they they're, not, they're, to. they're not used to take, taking care of themselves on the road. Yeah, you know, it, it's growing pains. It yeah, happens. It does. You know, it's almost like you not having a job. Right. And then you all of a sudden getting a job where you have to leave your house. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be the growing pains of I'm going to be late. How's traffic looking? How's this looking? If you're not equipped for that, because, because it just kind of happened. Right. So it was hard to like, like, like predict yeah. to get back on the road. So they were just kind of thrown in there, and these companies were like, oh, shit, we need to start getting these people back in now. Right, so back, back in road shape. Back, not, not just back in road shape, but back in our multi-state tours to make the most yeah, money. Back, back in road shape. That's oh, these... oh I, I, I thought you were talking about like the wrestlers, not the promotions. That, well, that, I mean, it goes it goes every single way. the The promotions weren't ready, and the wrestlers weren't ready to get back on the road. Right, they just kind of hit you out of nowhere. But right. you know, it's not like this was unprecedented or anything. No, you know, this, whatever. Again, this just happens. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, some some potential solutions. I think um, I think I think that some of those potential solutions would just be more comprehensive wellness and health checks. That is actually going to come up very soon. But, but here, here's the also uh, here's the other thing. Wrestlers also have a responsibility to have the forward planning on having that kind of stuff. Now, freak accidents can happen, but. I think there's always still some fail safes. Well, yeah. I think you need to know the limitations of your body. There's a limitation of a mindset, a mindset, a mindset and a skill set to where you need to realize, you know, give me some more time. Well, right, to- but the promotion also has a responsibility to make sure that oh, you're healthy too. It- it's an equal thing, you know. It, well, when you're an independent contractor, I think you're more responsible. You're more responsible for your general well-being than the promotions that you're working for. But the promotions, especially with a promotion like WWE, where you oh, don't have yeah, those freedoms. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm talking you. Right. The, that, that's the, that's different. The promotion has a responsibility yes. to their wrestlers to make sure that but the those, wrestlers those, are given all the options available to them. In those those to wrestlers the are trips. exclusive to that company. But let's talk about a great example. Matt Cardona, who had five or six world champions wrestling all over the place, doing well, and then all of a sudden this happens. I think it was more so of doing too much too fast. Mm -hmm. And then this happens, and it totally throws off a lot of different promotions. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily his fault, but it's not necessarily their fault. There's a responsibility share to the health and safety of the wrestler. Mm -hmm. Uh, with with that, it's like, you know, you're four world champions in. I'm not going to call you. Right. But then there's also the responsibility of that 1099 worker saying, you know, I'm already booked through the rest of this month and the next three months. Why am I taking on another promotion? Right. Okay. That makes more. That makes sense. So it's, it's an equal opportunity responsibility to make sure mm-hmm. that not only are the workers that are going into your company are safe because – the, the promotions are only responsible from when they actually go into the ring. Mm-hmm. That's the only time when they're responsible. Yeah. It's up to the wrestler to know the limitations on how many things they can do to promote it. Right. And Matt Cardona, I think, is a good example. I think he was as excited to get back in the ring and he did too much too soon. Mm-hmm. I'm not faulting him. I'm just saying that there is that responsibility. And, you know, I think, too, that um, I think that fan and wrestler promoter expectations are a little too high as well. I think I, so too. I think I think that we need to get back to a level of of wrestling where it is safe for everybody cuz yep. I 
I'm sorry, I can't see John Moxley bleed his head to death every single time he gets in the ring. And then he goes into a place like GCW because he's their world champion. Right, and then he's in death matches. It's like, hello, what if he gets injured tomorrow in a death match? And he, it just, just, very and he, and he just came happened. back. He, he might end up like fucking Jeff Hardy again. I'm sorry, I'm going to say that. I think if he continues at the path that he's going with all of this shit, I would not be surprised if he but, ended but, up like Jeff, but, Jeff Hardy you know, again. That's just an example of of what wrestling has become. Now, Jeff, now look at now. This is a good example too. Jeff and Matt Hardy, they weren't wrestling. Now they were. They were wrestling in Triple A. They had a match at Triple A, and then you know Jeff and Matt Hardy were doing some of the smaller. Indie promotions, and we saw them promoted all the time. And they were, you know, and, and, and Jeff Hardy's expectations were so high mm -hmm. that he was, and the fans' expectations of Jeff Hardy to be able to perform at at, at, at like at a two thousand eight level, ladder ladder hell, right, was so high that he he had to self medicate somehow. Yeah. And I I think that I think that our the. The wrestling culture needs to get back to a pre-pandemic sort of expectation. And I predicted this. I I 100% said, here's the thing. It's like, oh, well, what about Darby Allen? Darby Allen wrestles in one promotion. Right. He does not take bookings in GCW. He does not take promotion uh, bookings right. in other places because he would have promoted it. Right. He only takes bookings in one place. Yeah. Even even though Darby Allen is a psychopath and he's going to be crippled by 35, he's only doing that in one promotion. So I think that there just needs to be a shift. There is there is an equal responsibility yeah. from a lot of people, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's up to the wrestler. Yeah. So if you want longevity in the ring, eat right, stay away from drugs and you know excess alcohol. It, it doesn't hurt to have a beer or two after like a match. But don't go crazy. But also, diet. Uh, let's not give. Let's not give people uh, health advice while we're on air here. But well, it's, it's, think, it, but but it's still it's it's responsible. It's, it's it's responsible, easy stuff. Wrestlers need to be held. Wrestlers need to be held accountable for at the, the end, work that they put in. At the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, they are the only ones. Promotions have a responsibility to ensure the health and safety of their wrestlers, and they try to do their best. And fans need to. The expectations fans have to need be, to lower their expectations if they expect longevity. I don't want to see a lot more death matches because. It does not help the lifespan of any wrestler. The the only time when a death match is fine is it within a promotion because it's easier to control a promotion booking Jeff Hardy for five death matches and then Jeff Hardy accepting five death matches. Right. So it's like, hey, GCW, for instance, has the ability to diversify certain matches to certain people at certain times where wrestlers may want to take that booking but GCW, at that point, has to have that responsibility saying, I know that he just had a brutal-ass match. What's the rest of your schedule look like? What was it the last week and a half? Right. Like, that, that's the kind of stuff that you kind of have and to keep. It's, it's, it's a balancing act yeah. of, like, three important factors right. is the promotion, the wrestler, and the fans. Who do you blame more? Because each of them have a, a definite responsibility. Yeah, they all do. It's, and and I think it just came off of what we experienced in the pandemic. Yep. And we're still feeling the this we're feeling the after effects of it right now. Yep. I th I think we're I think we're probably gonna have at least another couple of months, maybe six months, seven months yeah. of um, injuries coming out. But we need to kind of cool it down. We get it. We're excited. I mean, Peanut Gallery and I we love going to our wrestling shows. Trust me. But. There, there just has to be that balance. Yeah. And he and real, I, real we life, real that. life is not what you see on television. Exactly. You know, we we were spoiled with pandemic wrestling. You were. We were. And there, there was that expectation, and they're trying to meet that now. But expectation is going to break. And what is it going to take? I'm sorry, I don't want to see a wrestler legitimately die in the ring to cope with that. Right. I would rather see a wrestler out five, six months. Than a person paralyzed right. 
because of that that expectation. Yeah. That's just me. Exactly. So, anyways, when we come back, what are we going to be talking about? So, uh, because Because this was a multi-brand event, Forbidden Door, I want to talk about other ones and the significance of those as well.